Good day friends and children. This is Professor M. Desangarajan. We welcome you to Green Park Cambridge English course. This is podcast number 6. This course will guide you to a beautiful future. Part 1. Conversation 1. Hi Roshan, what's up? Oh Dianish, I've been looking for you. Can you lend me your biology book? Sure, I can. But return it by tomorrow. Yes, dear. You are such a help. Thank you. You're welcome, buddy. Conversation 2. Rajesh my friend when did you come Hi Suresh I just arrived dear what's the matter Your cousin Rahul has been looking for you Has he been Where is he now He is waiting in the library let's go Fine let's go and return soon for the next class Well friends it's part 2 some words for pronunciation practice 1 we are w e i r is pronounced as we are some people mispronounce it as where we are means a low dam built across a river we are number 2 singe s i n g e singe it means to burn something superficially He singed his mustache when he was lighting his cigar. Singe. Three. Sojourn. Sojourn. A temporary stay. Our life on earth is a sojourn. Sojourn. S O J O U R N. Sojourn. Number four. Bequeath. Lots of people pronounce it as bequeath. It is bequeath. leaving property to a person by a will big weed number 5 sucker s u c c o u r sucker means a support in times of hardship he was a sucker during my bad days without money sucker number 6 bludgeon b l u d g e o n bludgeon bludgeon means a heavy wood that is used as a weapon to hit another person bludgeon it's used as a verb as well he was bludgeoned heavily bludgeon number 7 cliche c l i c h e cliche means an overused word or phrase to a level of boredom cliche cliche number 8 brochure brochure a lot of people pronounce it as brochure that's wrong brochure b r o c h u r e brochure it's a booklet containing information on a product or service brochure part 3 stress rhythm in connected speech let's practice some sentences Treat your guests well. Treat your guests well. Tum ti tum tum. Treat your guests well. Tum ti tum tum. Sentence two. We chose this book. Ti tum ti tum. We chose this book. Ti tum ti tum. Let's practice more sentences. Number three. What brings you here today? What brings you here today? Four. Oh, I thought we could talk. Oh, I thought we could talk. Five. What's its price, please? What's its price, please? Six. It costs less than you think. It costs less than you think. Seven. She prefers coffee to tea. She prefers coffee to tea. Eight. He reads books of his choice. He reads books of his choice. 9. Where is the capital for this? Where is the capital for this? 10. 
Borrow money from the bank. Borrow money from the bank. 11. What are you doing this weekend? What are you doing this weekend? 12. We are going to visit friends. We are going to visit friends. That's the end of this part. Keep practicing these sentences well, children. Hello, dear friends. It's part four now. Let's have some fun discussing some idioms in English. We all know idioms are phrases with special meanings other than their literal meanings. Number one, hot potato. Imagine you walk into the kitchen and your mom picks a hot potato from the boiling water and puts it on your palm. What will happen? You will raise hell with your suffering palm. So hot potato is to handle a difficult situation. Number two, rat race. You know rats are very racy when it comes to two situations. One, faced with danger, they race with each other and run for safety at the greatest speed possible. So do they do when there is the prospect of smelly good food. So rat race is a very competitive race. We all live in a world of rat races. Number three, hard nut to crack. Any person who is a strong-willed person and wouldn't listen to reason can be called as a hard nut to crack. Oh, my uncle is a hard nut to crack. He wouldn't listen to my reasons. Part five. And today's song is The Earth is My Home. Let's follow it and learn better pronunciation, children. The Earth is my home. I promise to keep it healthy and Well, friends and children, part six, it's story time. The story of the little boy who saved Holland. One day, a young boy by name Hans Blinker went to visit his blind elderly friend, Mr. Jensen. After a pleasant visit, he started walking home. It was already evening. On his way, he was distracted by flowers, butterflies and birds. He was a nature lover. He played with them for over two hours near the dikes, for the road was close to the dikes. For our information, dikes are dams built against the higher seawater in Holland. If dikes were not built, seawater would flood and drown many villages and towns. So the dikes were large walls that held back the seawaters. Every child in Holland knows that if the dikes break, Water will rush in and all will be lost. 
As Hans was busy playing, he didn't notice the sun setting. When he realized how late it was, he quickened his pace of walk towards home. He was walking on the bridge-like path on the dikes when he heard some water trickling noise. He stepped onto the side of the wall and looked down the sloping dike wall. Down a few lines of granite stones, he could see water seeping out in trickles. Hans could sense that there was a hole in the wall. It must be a small hole. But with mounting pressure of sea water on the other side, the hole could expand and become large. Hans clearly understood if left unattended and unrepaired, the hole could grow larger and the wall would breach with catastrophic results. Vast areas of the countryside would be flooded. Many villages would be submerged, including his own village. Hans climbed down the sloping stone wall carefully, balancing his weight against the gravity. He reached the line of stones where the hole was. He positioned himself carefully and put his finger into the hole. The trickle stopped, but his finger had to be kept there. He cried for help, but alas, not a soul was nearby. Darkness grew with increasing cold. Hans had just enough warm clothes for the daytime weather, but it was not enough for the night cold. Still, he sat there with his worries crowding his small mind. He was really frightened of ghosts and goblins. He felt hunger eating through his stomach. He lay half asleep. When it was dawn, the village priest came along that way. He heard the moaning sounds of a child. He peeked over the dike and saw hands lying there. The priest recognized the boy. He stepped down fast. Two of his assistants who came behind joined him. They carried the boy home. Masons were called in to repair the dike. Everyone in the village and in the neighboring villages came to know of Hans and his heroic act. They all praised him for saving the country from a great disaster. From then on, Hans Bricker was known as a boy who saved Holland. His story has become history. So a brave act is the common sense response to a difficult situation. Anyone can be a hero if you have the mind and willpower to help others. That's the end of the podcast today. Professor Desingrajan signing off. Thank you.